Good morning. Thank you for joining us for morning prayer this morning, Thursday, May 27. This morning, we remember John Charles Roper, who was the Archbishop of Ottawa, who died on this day in the year 1940. So John Charles Roper. Let us prepare our hearts as we enter into morning prayer taken from the Book of Alternative Services. Our opening sentence is taken from the fourth chapter of the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians and reads, We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Son of Righteousness has risen. O come, let us worship. Together we will pray the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to God with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In God's hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are God's also. The sea is God's for God made it and God's hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture, and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to God's voice. Let us pray together Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For the Lord has founded it on the seas, and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in the Lord's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek God, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord is the King of glory. Alleluia, the Son of Righteousness has risen. O come, let us worship. Our first reading for this morning is taken from the 34th chapter of the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And now the psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 40. 
You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I will delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the twelfth chapter of the Gospel, according to Luke. And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and prudent manager whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and if he begins to beat the other slaves, men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour that he does not know, and he will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That slave who knew that what his master wanted but did not prepare himself or do what was wanted will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So today we commemorate John Charles Roper, who was Archbishop of Ottawa in the early years of the 20th century and a servant of Christ, whose leadership was honored by Anglicans in Canada and around the world. He was an Englishman who came to this country in the year 1886 as the first Keble Professor of Divinity at Trinity College in Toronto. Two years later, he was appointed vicar of St. Thomas's Church in that city and began his long association with the Sisters of St. John the Divine as their chaplain. He moved to New York, where he taught at the General Theological Seminary for over a decade, but returned to Canada in the year 1911 when he was elected Bishop of British Columbia. Hmm. Four years later, he was elected Bishop of Ottawa, where he was installed on this date in the year 1915. He eventually became Metropolitan of the Ecclesiastical Province of Ontario, an office which gave him the title of Archbishop. Roper possessed not only a keen mind and sound scholarship, but also an ability to translate ideas into practical action. This gift gave him unique influence in the councils of the Canadian Church as it dealt with its revision of the prayer book in the year 1918 and felt the social impact of the Great Depression in the 1930s. He also had an important role at international gatherings of Anglican bishops and played a distinguished part in the Lucane Conference on Faith and Order in the year 1927, which was a step towards the foundation of the World Council of Churches. But most of all, Archbishop Roper was a man of deep and constant prayer who placed his spiritual resources at the disposal of all the people in his diocese, that they might be strengthened in their own service of Christ and one another. Mm. And it is for this faithful stewardship of God's gifts, as much as for his great public influence, that we honor Archbishop Roper today. And now let us affirm our faith 
in the words of Hear, O Israel. Hear, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And now we invite you to assume whichever posture you find most prayerful for the prayers of the people. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of God's people, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations, for the leaders in this country, and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> For this city of Edmonton, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather and for abundant, har abundant harvests for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Have mercy. For those who travel, for the sick and the suffering, for prisoners and captives, we pray for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died and for those who mourn, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that where two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Creator, are good and loving, and we glorify you through the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the collect of the day. Eternal God, who laid your hand upon John Roper and made him a bishop and servant of your people to give them true nurture in Christ. Grant us unity in faith, steadfastness in hope, and constancy in love, that by word and deed we may show ourselves true members in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now together let us pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From our house to yours, we hope you have a wonderful Thursday.